Welcome back, everyone, to a unique reaction video. Uh, today, we're actually going to take a look at uh, my friend Rob, uh, who is from the area around London. He's from Surrey uh, in England, and uh, he has a channel called History in Your Hand, which has some fantastic historic site content. I uh, highly recommend you check it out, not only because Rob's my friend, but because I think he does a great job. Uh, we first met when we had dinner together in Ypres in Belgium, and we've since had the opportunity to spend, each other, uh, spend some time with each other a couple of times, and I'm going to see him several more times in the coming months. I'm going to see him in Munich and in Berchtesgaden next week. Uh, I'm going to see him again in November in Verdun, and then probably in February in England we're going to be uh, catching a West Brom game together. So uh, excited about all of that. But um, back in June, we got to be a part of the We Happy Few 506 tour in Normandy. I shot a bunch of content for that myself. Um, had some issues with some of the content, so I don't know how much of it will end up being seen on the channel. But he did a, uh, a brief video just kind of showing some of the highlights of our tour. And I thought that this would be fun not only as an opportunity to kind of talk through what that experience was like uh, as a way of hopefully encouraging you to visit Normandy when you get a chance or to even do one of these tours. They've got a massive one coming up next spring where they're going to be doing everything from England to Normandy to the Netherlands, uh, to Germany, and to Austria, kind of walking in the footsteps of Easy Company from Band of Brothers. Uh, so uh, we're going to watch this. I'll put the link down in the description because I really want to encourage you to check out Rob's channel. Uh, by the time you guys see this, I will have also done an Instagram or a YouTube live interview uh, with him. We're going to do a chat um, that you, many of you may have already seen because I'm filming a bunch of videos ahead of time for while I'm in Munich. But let's just kind of watch this together, and I want to talk you through some of what we experienced. And I, I have no idea what Rob shows in this video, so we'll see. There's our little bus that we were on. We're about 45, 50 of Today, us. I'm going to take you guys along uh, with me on a tour that I'm doing today in Normandy. Uh, so I'm going to pause right here because this is in St. Mary Eglise. And we were there around the anniversary of D-Day, the 79th anniversary. So you see all the buses right there. What you see in the background are actual uh, real-life airborne troops who were training for a jump they were going to do. I'm not sure if they ended up doing it because the wind was really bad while we were in Normandy. Uh, that's why I have scars on my face to this day uh, from... Or, yeah, was it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was this side. And you'll see it in my videos that I made from the Psalm uh, because my drone attacked me in the wind. Uh, but these guys were training with the static lines for their jumps. Here is part of the We Happy Few 506 uh, tour group. Uh, and we're going around with Paul Woodage as our tour guide, who is fantastic. One of the Paul's best great. tour guides you could possibly have in Normandy. So we're really lucky. We're starting here in St. Mary Gleach. We've just been on the bus. We're staying by Ken. Loads of other YouTubers are on this tour, which is going to be really cool as well. So we are um, just arrived at St. Marie It's so busy here. Um, it was. Uh, D-Day itself is You had to park like outside of town. We had a bus, so we were able to drive in. But um, you had to park outside of town and walk into town because there were so many people. There, were, there was live music going on. It was like a big kind of party scene there were veterans there they were uh, you know a lot of the um, sixth today is the third great thing uh, so it is real busy um there's a load of guys um i believe from the 82nd airborne i think i heard uh doing like some practice drills behind us here because i think they're going to be doing a parachute uh, jump uh, like display which is really good so i'm going to take you guys along on this tour today hopefully going to be a good one let's go it's assembled the 82nd to jump. So right off the bat, I just want to, uh, so this is actually in St. Mariglise and where we're standing right there is very close, like within maybe 50 or 100 feet of where Carwood Lipton landed on the morning of D-Day. Uh, that night before when they jumped behind enemy lines. And uh, right here on the right, you just see a little bit of Peter McCabe, who played Donald Hubler in Band of Brothers, who was along for that tour. And Paul Woodage, if you haven't seen World War II TV, you're missing out. Paul is like the best of the best, man. I mean, he knows his stuff. He's also a great guy. I uh, had an amazing time talking to him the couple of days that we were together, and I can't wait to, to get over there and see him again. Really enjoyed being able to 
follow him and, and listen to his stories. He knew a lot of these these veterans firsthand and got a lot of their stories. That's why he knew exactly. Like he pointed to the exact spot where Lipton landed. From where we were standing there, you could almost see where Winters landed and where a couple of other guys did as well. With the rifle under their gear on the front of their bodies. And for the you see in episode four, Randleman explains to Ashi and whoever else is Garcia, you jump with your rifle across, ready to go. The problem with jumping with your rifle across your body there, if you're a shorter person and it moves around a bit, the barrel of the rifle, the butt, depending on which way you are, has a tendency to smack you in the face. And you can maybe get a bruise on the... St. Mary's is a really cool city. Cool town. It's not really a city. And this was a really common sight during the D-Day. I mean, I hear if you go like in the winter time in the off season that there's not a lot of people there and it's like kind of like a ghost town but my first experience in normandy was very very busy you saw a lot of this though people driving around and stuff right we just got off the bus and we're just walking down to mommy on sander mommy on farm here with sander so sander was flying his drone a lot during the trip and uh, i did a, a little bit here and there but if you haven't seen sander vk history you're missing out Sand of VK history. He's I've from talked the about Netherlands. his channel a fair bit on mine, but just in case you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. Oh, thank you, man. Of Appreciate course, it. man. There's another small YouTuber just ahead of us here as well. <laughs> Must be JD. Oh, no, it's me. Chris, moving <laughs> through history. We just started. Just started. Just started. <laughs> I'm hoping I can get some traction from appearing <laughs> on your channel. You've got to get help him out with his channel. He's trying to grow it like mine, so make sure you go follow his channel too. And that's my daughter, Rachel, on her phone, walking behind Rob there. <laughs> she was on the tour with us too. <laughs> I was Marmion Farm. Farm. This was really, really a cool site. And that's so that's a memorial there to the guys on Lieutenant Meehan's plane. Uh, if you've seen Band of Brothers that crashes on D-Day. Uh, a good chunk of the men of Easy Company who were killed in action during the war died on D-Day. Uh, many of them in that plane. And this memorial here is not actually at the site. It's... Uh, I don't know, maybe quarter, half a mile from the site, but it's in a, a high traffic area so it can be seen. Whereas the site itself, you have to kind of go down this gravel road. But to this day, and I don't know if he'll have any of the drone shots of it that Sander took, you can actually see the spot where the plane hit because things don't grow there because of the, uh, the way that the soil was contaminated from the, the burning wreckage. So you can see the exact spot the plane went down. I think maybe Sander might have given him some drone footage for this. So you guys who are Band of Brothers fans will remember in the opening scenes they have the plane crash. That's where uh, Lieutenant Thomas Meehan's plane goes down, which ultimately puts Winters in charge. Uh, and we've just come to the site now uh, near to where Meehan's plane crashed. We're by the monument right now and we're going to walk from here um, up into the fields further up behind the monument where the actual plane uh, crashed um, as depicted in the uh, not the first episode but one of the earlier episodes of Band of Brothers. Episode two I think um, and also uh, they did recover remains from that uh, obviously probably not identifiable because it burned for a couple of days I think before anybody got to the site. Uh, but their remains are in a mass grave at Jefferson Barracks in Missouri. Uh, really interesting. It's a site I've never been to. There it is. There's the dr drone footage. So right there, you can see. I mean, this is literally, if you've seen the, the shot in Band of Brothers where it kind of hits the ground and skids across and leaves that scorch mark on the ground, that's that exact spot. And you can see how things just do not grow there because of how badly the soil was contaminated. Here we are 80 years later, and this farmer's feel is still affected by that. We didn't actually walk out to that site. We were at the edge of the field. Ooh, good flag shot there, Rob. So that's Matt Leach who played Talbert and who kind of is the, the staple, the mainstay, the, the main face that you see on all of these tours. Phenomenal guy. So much ener great energy and fun to be around and just really so glad to be able to call him a friend. He's, he, love you, Matt. 
Saint Marie Dumont. We did not go to Utah Beach on the tour. Of We Happy Few 506 tour. Uh, we just came off the bus just down near uh, Utah Beach kind of area. We're a bit inland though. Looking forward to it. Let's go. This is a really cool site, this church. I'm sure he'll talk about it. So we just stopped off the bus in uh, Angerville, El Plain, to a, uh, a church here with a, with a fantastic story. Yeah. Um, and I'm really lucky to be here with someone who uh, has done a very detailed video of this and knows a lot more about the site than I do, who is going to quickly share with us uh, the story of where we are. There so he is. we are lucky enough to be here with JD from the uh, History Underground, who's yeah. going to tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, sure. So uh, as was already mentioned, we're in the Normandy village of Angleville, All Plain. And uh, behind me is the, the church here in the village that served as an aid station during D-Day. Uh, 200 First Airborne medics by the names of Robert Wright and Kenneth Moore found themselves here uh, just, just by happenstance. And uh, there's a book called Angels of Mercy that Paul Woodage wrote, who was our tour guide, about this story. Highly recommend. Uh, I'm privileged to have an autographed copy that Paul gave me while we were there. Uh, on the, the morning of June 6th. And this kind of became a collection point for both the Americans uh, and the Germans. Yep. And there are all kinds of uh, compelling stories of the things that happened here as, as these two um, young men were, were treating the wounded, uh, again, from both sides and from some of the French villagers that, that were coming in. Mm. Uh, it, it's probably one of my, my favorite spots here in Normandy and uh, really probably one of the, the most moving stories I agree. of um, you know, a, a place that, that served as a spot for uh, spiritual healing that uh, became a spot of physical healing on one of the most momentous days during World War II. Yeah. That's, I mean, you see what I mean? Such a great place. And uh, if, if by any chance there is someone watching my channel who hasn't already seen JD's video on his channel, uh, make sure you check it out because yeah. it really is a, um, a fantastic place to hear about. Uh, and if ever you get the chance to, to come to. So I don't know if he's going to show it or not, but well, you know what? I'll wait until we finish this scene and talk about anything he doesn't cover in the video. Hey, there was me again. All right, so he didn't show anything else. If you go in the church... There's actually still blood stains on some of the pews from where the because the pews is that's where they had to lay the guys that they were treating. They were treating Germans, they were treating Americans. Uh, and actually, uh, some of the first guys who came there to that site were guys like Dick Winters and Lewis Nixon, Ronald Spears, guys like that. Um, and I believe at least one of those two medics who were there treating these men. Um, actually now has his ashes buried in the cemetery. And I filmed some of that in my video of the site that hopefully I'll, I'll get out to you at some point. Powerful site. I mean, there's still damage from mortars and stuff in the church. So we've just come to a place called Purple Heart Lane on the main road just outside Carentan. And this is where men of the 502nd attacked Carentan down this road behind us. Uh, it was a bloody fight for them, and uh, Paul Woodage just told us the story where we will be driving from this bridge to the next one. It's going to take us about 30 seconds. It took the men of the 502nd about 12 hours to fight inch by inch that same distance. Eventually that attack was pulled back, um, and there was a flanking manoeuvre involving men of the uh, 101st, which is pictured in Banner Brothers, flanking round and attacking Carantan from the other side. And From here we're going to go to the site of uh, the Battle of Bloody Gulch, so yeah, he makes a great point. And Purple Heart Lane, I know JD's done some videos on that. Um, we see in Band of Brothers the attack on Carentan. And while it seems like it was pretty rough, it was actually a pretty easy attack. And they took the town fairly e easily. And a big part of that is because of what these other guys had done at places like Purple Heart Lane, where they just took massive casualties uh, in attacking the Germans there. They, they were Fallschirmjägers. They were, you know, they were some good German soldiers that were defending Carentan. And then Bloody Gulch, of course, we visited, um, and that's portrayed in Band of Brothers as well. Again, involving the men of Easy Company and featured in Band of Brothers. We're looking forward to that. But I just wanted to touch on the story here, because had it not been for the attack of the men of the 502nd here, what the guys from Easy Company and the 101st did might not have been possible. So it's really yeah, important to think about those stories that's absolutely outside true. of the stuff we see in Band of Brothers and Easy Company. 
And he makes a good point. And, and I know for folks like Paul Woodage, it's it's kind of frustrating. And and I get that it's frustrating, but I also get it. Um, because of Band of Brothers, there's this hyper focus on the Men of Easy Company, the 101st Airborne, and these guys' stories, which we so many of us know so intimately. And I, I'm among those people who find myself interested in those things, right? Enough that I've done multiple of these tours. But there were hundreds of thousands of men who did equally courageous uh, things, who suffered equally difficult, if not much worse, uh, situations. And their stories need to be told as well. And so much of the story of World War II is about Purple Heart Lane. And it is about Gold Beach and Juno Beach and Sword Beach and Utah Beach. And not just about Omaha Beach, you know, and Normandy. And there's so many other great stories to be told besides just the guys of Easy Company. Hedgerow Field. Each one you have to kind of cross open field. It takes time and you have to check there happened to be in front of our company. Uh, uh, there, there's me again. <laughs> and JD. So it's funny, kind of, there were a lot of running jokes going on about all the YouTubers who were there. Because Sander was there, and Rob, and me, and JD, and Eric Dorr was on the tour with us. Um, and, and so at any given time, you can see any number of us making videos. So now we're... This is not the site of Bloody Gulch, but it's close to it. So we're just walking along a pathway that uh, used to be a railway line. And this is the site of the Battle of Bloody Gulch, just outside Carantan. And Paul Woodage is uh, telling us the story. He's just shown us where the like advanced position was. And now we're going back to where Easy Company were, were positioned. Uh, and also the spot where uh, Welsh um, in the Senior Banner Brothers had the bazooka to take out the tank. That's where we're headed to right now. There's the site, yep. So this is the actual site where when you see the guys in Easy Company, it's the scene where they see Blythe kind of hiding down in the hole where Talbert gets bayoneted um, and, and where they fight that difficult battle and, and they're dealing with the German armor and then the second armored come in, comes in from the one side. Um, all of that happened right where you're looking right now. This is that site. Kind of an industrial park so Sander now. Sander VK Histories out here getting us the drone shots. And there's Marcel. What do you think, man? We got some good footage? Yeah, man. Really cool. Also, the sun is like, it's giving me a really cool light, lighting in this like archway that we're walking in now. Nice. So That's funny that there's Marcel standing there and uh, I'm getting messages from Marcel right now in a group chat. Um, there's a bunch of us going to Verdun in November. Uh, these three guys you see in that video, along with myself and a couple of others that don't have YouTube channels. Marcel's getting ready to start one. He has an Instagram uh, about war movies, but he's getting ready to start a YouTube channel. We're helping him out to get started with that. So I'll let you guys know about that when it comes. He's also Sounds from the good, Netherlands. Very good. Looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, you, you can have some shots if you want, some footage. <laughs> So we've Great just guys. come round um, the other side from, from where we were just now. So roughly in this area is where Easy Company were dug in um, along the edge of uh, the Battle of Bloody Gulch. And just in this field next to us um, is where uh, Welsh pushed forward and used mm -hmm. the bazooka to take out the uh, the tank. You might remember the scene in Band of Brothers, I'm sure you will. And that, that happened just here. I'm going to make a little short video about it on my channel so you can go check that out. Um, but this is where um, Easy Company were based. Um, F Company just up um, off here to their left. And, and this is where it happened, a Battle of Bloody Gulch, right? And I, I think I got some of it on video. When my video goes live, it'll show. But uh, Paul was explaining to us that the scene where you see dog and fox companies fall back on the left, and their, their commanders were relieved, uh, by I think by Colonel Strayer, uh, for that action. But it was actually a lot more complicated. And when you hear the whole story, it actually makes a lot of sense what actually happened but they just kind of became fall guys. Uh, and from the perspective where we're standing right now, I believe it's it would be just behind us is where um, Colonel Sink had his headquarters for Carantan. And there's a big hole in the side of the building that was caused by German armor. So out here in this area ahead of us, um, there would have been a hedgerow ran like a cross here um, with the German tank coming through from kind of, sort of yep. this direction. Uh, and out here in 
front of it. Yeah, if you look at a map of Carentan, you can find this kind of industrial park where it happened. And, and on the other side of that building is where that rail line is that he was walking on earlier. This is where Welsh uses bazooka to take out that tank. Not much to look at today, but that's where it happened. And now we're at Omaha Beach. Now, that uh, the previous day, in the early morning, we had gone down to Omaha Beach, and the water was all the way up, right? there. You didn't see beach like this, but this is much more what it would have looked like on D-Day, where they came in at low tide. That was intentional, because if you came in at high tide, they would have hit these barriers that had mines on the end of them, which would have exploded a lot of the boats. And so they had to make a, a decision to come in at low tide where they could come in without hitting those barriers and those mines, but it also meant they had a lot more ground to cover in front of machine gun and artillery fire. Okay, so we've just arrived in, in probably one of the most famous it's sections green. of the, uh, the beach areas in Normandy. And we are currently on the end of the Dog Green sector of Omaha Beach. This is the dividing section between where Dog Green ends and the Charlie sector. Um, so, uh, yeah, just on the other side behind him is where Charlie would have been. Charlie's where the actual first wave of uh, rangers would have come. Dog Green is what you see in um, Saving Private Ryan, but it was actually infantry. It was the Bedford boys who landed there. Um, there were rangers that came in later. Uh, but this was probably one of the deadliest spots on D-Day um, was Dog Green Sector. Most... The vast majority of the guys in that first company that landed, uh, I think it was Able Company, um, most of them ne never even fired a shot. Uh, that's how bad it was for the Bedford boys. Um, and and uh, there's a Veter Stan's nest just behind him there. Um, and this is probably one of the more famous spots on any of the beaches. Starts, um, but right here is Dog Green, as was depicted in the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. They were supposed to be in the Dog Green sector uh, attacking up here and then behind him would be the length of omaha beach charlie was the extreme right flank of omaha beach and then it went dog green and then you had the other sectors kind of moving from right to left uh which would be um the the way we're facing now we are looking behind rob would be east uh so behind us from our perspective would be utah beach up the peninsula and then going in that direction would be the other beaches the back of the beach right here behind us and then where this gap is up here behind me uh, that goes through um, to what was uh, dog one the uh, draw one that came off the back of the beach just here at Omaha and that's the draw that they were trying to secure in Saving Private Ryan where you had uh, the draw actually goes up uh, and, and, wow. and over to that yeah behind him there incredible place to be just amazing so yeah the dog green sector of omaha beach is really is a cool place to go there are places uh, and i've talked about it places like the somme um where you can really kind of feel the history and this is one of those places yeah. it's, uh, you can really feel the history of what goes on right here and as you guys already know from the other parts of the video I've been doing, one of the guys I'm here with uh, is Chris from Vlogging Through History, and he's done a um, a cool video about the Bedford boys uh, who landed here at Omaha Beach. I haven't put it up yet, but it's coming. The first wave in the dog green sector. I'm going to get him to share with us 30 seconds what that's about, uh, oh. so you can make sure you check it out. I honestly did not remember doing this. That's awesome. I didn't know I was in this video. This channel. So there's so many stories that you could tell about the events that happened here. And yes, I think I'm wearing a Wrexham jersey under that Albion hoodie. At Omaha Beach and at Dog Green Sector, but specifically, I'm gonna be telling the story of the men who were in the first wave here in this sector. It was Able Company of the 116th Infantry. They've come down in history as the Bedford Boys because on this day, uh, nearly two dozen of them would fall and give their lives uh, fighting uh, in that first wave at Omaha Beach. And I think by two dozen, I meant two dozen guys from Bedford, Virginia, which was this small town of a couple thousand people. And that's why uh, the National D-Day Memorial is in Bedford, Virginia, because Bedford lost more men killed than any town in America on D-Day.
It's because of that company. It was a, it was a, um, oh, there's me and JD <laughs> making a video about, uh, my, my pants are looking kind of baggy in that shot. That's not good. Um, I think we were making a video about, um, I forget which section it was. Um, is it Easy Red? I think it might be Easy Red. So all of us YouTube guys have been taking a lot of stick, a lot of banter yes. about the fact we keep filming stuff. and We have. Here's why, because we keep stepping off to the side and looking silly like this. <laughs> this is History Underground, JD, Chris vlogging through history, filming something. So, and I have to say that we actually shot this same video the day before at that site. But JD, who is, as much as he jokes about just being a monkey with a camera, he really is a stickler for wanting to do it right uh, and, and do these stories justice. And so he wanted to reshoot it because I kind of put him on the spot and just asked him to share something about something that I knew he knew a lot about. He didn't do any preparation. He didn't do any research. He just stood there and talked about it off the top of his head. And so he wanted to go back and do it again. Car's getting in my way, but there you go. So we just come down to the Easy Red sector. It was Easy Red. Um, and we have here WN65. So in Veter stands in S65, that is where I took the drone uh, scars landing. was right about probably within five minutes of when Rob's shooting this video. Which is one of the defensive positions uh, that the Germans had here on the back of the beach. You can see damage in it. And yeah, this is a cool got, site. You know, uh, th they still got the gun in there with the damage that was done to it. Artillery holes and all sorts. Really, uh, really interesting here. We're nearly finished the tour now, so this is going to be the, uh, the last stop of the weekend. There it is. Yeah, definitely check that spot out at Easy Red if you get a chance. And a lot of these pillboxes ended up getting turned into memorials to the American units who fought in these sectors at uh, Omaha Beach. And right down there in that area is, I think a little further to the right here, is the very famous Wiederstands Nest 62, uh, which is where the guy that's known as the Beast of Omaha claimed to have brought down like more than a thousand Americans with his machine gun. Uh, it's also where we saw a body being recovered the first morning that we were there. Uh, we don't know the whole story behind that, but they found a body on Omaha Beach that morning. All right, so that was really cool, and uh, I just thought it was fun because it gives me a chance to talk about a, a, an amazing experience that I had with some people that have become really good friends to me. Uh, I, I've made these incredible friends through this channel uh, through these tours, guys like Matt Leach and Paul Woodage and Rob and JD and Sander and Marcel. and They're, they're lifelong friends. They're people I'll probably be friends with for the rest of my life and see as often as I can when I go to Europe. So really check out their channels. I'm going to put links to all of them down in the description and especially to Rob's channel. This was just really more of a chance for me to talk about this incredible experience. Introduce you to Rob's channel if you haven't already had a chance to check it out and uh, maybe teach you a few things along the way and show you some sites that you should maybe visit if you ever get the chance. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.